Well, good morning, South Fellowship Church. This is Ryan Paulson, uh, lead pastor, and we're looking at, on our sermon video today, 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 through 14. And if you were here for our message on Sunday, you will um, maybe remember that we talked about this idea of the church using the holy kiss as a reflection of the community that they were trying to create. Well, let's read this text, and there's a, just two things today that I want to talk about. Um, Paul, writing to the church at Corinth, his second letter says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. It's the first command. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another. Be of one mind and live in peace. And the God of peace, of love and peace, will be with you. It's this really interesting promise that as we do these things, rejoice, encourage, restoration, unity, and peace, that, that God makes his dwelling in those places. Next he says, and then greet one another with a, a holy kiss. Now, Oftentimes when you're reading the Bible, the temptation is to just say, um, if, if they use the holy kiss, then we should too. It's sort of this um, very flat reading of the Bible where it's like, if it happened there, it should always happen here. Um, but a kiss was meaningful in different ways in each culture. And, and that's true even still today. So the question isn't isn't should we should we um use the kiss or or bring back the kiss as it were the question is what did the kiss mean what did the kiss mean and for these early followers of Jesus there were two things that the kiss meant um first it meant that they were committed to reconciliation. That when things went wrong, or restoration as this passage says, that when things went wrong, they were committed to putting them back together because they were um, a body. And they were in this thing together. And the second thing the kiss meant was that there was equality. See, in a Roman culture, in a Greco-Roman world, um, certainly the kiss was used and, and the kiss was practiced, but it was only practiced amongst equals. So oftentimes you, you would see people sort of in a marketplace and they would kiss, but they were on equal footing socially. But, but a slave would never kiss a free person. A free person would never kiss a slave. And, and you would never kiss somebody of a different ethnicity. But inside the church, you had all these different people who were from different backgrounds, different socioeconomic classes, different ethnicities, and they were all kissing because they were all part of one body or a family. And so we have to do the hard work. The, the easy thing is to, just to say, like, like, well, if they kissed, then, well, we should too. And in our culture, that would be weird. Actually, the hermeneutic, hermeneutical principle is to figure out what actually was going on and why were they practicing this kiss and how do we do the same thing in our culture today? How, how do we fight for reconciliation? And how do we create church culture where there's equality, where there's not a hierarchy amongst believers? Well, th this passage continues, and it says this, um, All the God's people send their greetings. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's a, a really fascinating Trinitarian. So if you're looking for passages of Scripture that talk about, talk about the Trinity, this is one of them. See, we have Jesus, we have God the Father, and we have the Spirit all reflected in one passage. And it's this unique picture of, um, of Jesus being, being the, the grace of God of the Father picturing the love of God 
and the Spirit, the presence of God. And that each of these parts of the Trinity show up in unique ways in the church. And this beautiful manifold wisdom of God that's displayed in the church as they reflect reconciliation and equality, that what happens is, in, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 22, it, it reads like this, in him you also, the church, are being built together. It's a sort of this like brick by brick by brick being built together to be a dwelling place for God by His Spirit. So as we live in the way of grace, as we live in the way of love, as we live in a recognition of the presence of God, God makes His dwelling among us. Now, this, friends, is the beautiful part about being a part of the church. And so here's my encouragement today. We, we don't need to bring back the kiss. You can say, praise God. But we do need to bring back what the kiss meant. Reconciliation and equality. And as we do those things, the grace of God, the love of God, and the presence of God, the scriptures say, dwells among us. And as God's presence dwells among us, it's a beacon of light to the world around us. So I hope that encourages you today. The, the principles for studying your Bible are, it's not always a one-to-one -one correlation. If they did it, we need to do it too. We have to do the hard work of figuring out in their culture what that meant, and then asking the question, what does it mean in our culture today? All right, have a great day. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week.